I welcome you all for the wireless communication lecture modules. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about a code division multiplexes. So in earlier lecture, we have discussed about the uh, FDMA and the CDMA. The third type of multiple access is called a CDMA. So okay, CDMA is nothing but code division multiplexes. Here, in the first case, we are using n number of frequencies for each uh, each channels. Okay, that is called FDMA. And the second one, we are using the same carrier frequency but with the different time slots that is called as CDMA. In case of CDMA, we are using a same carrier frequency, same time slots, but we are going to vary the code for the individual users. That is called as a code division multiplexes. So in code division multiplexes, the narrow band message signal is multiplied by a very large bandwidth signal called a spreading signal. So this spreading signal is normally generated with the help of pseudo noise code sequence okay that has a chip rate which is in the order of magnitudes greater than the data rate of the message so we are going to create a one spreaded signal and that spread signal is normally called as a code and that chip rate of the code is much greater than the uh, magnitude of the data rate Okay. so all the CDMA system uses a same carrier frequency as I mentioned, same carrier frequency and it has used the same time slots. So each user has his own uh, pseudo random process, which is approximately all the codes are orthogonal to one another. So the receiver performance time correlation operation to detect only specific code, desired code words. All the other code words are has to be appeared for the desired receivers. So for a detection of message signal, the receiver, as I have mentioned, so if a transmitter transmit with a signal with the help of code, if the code has to be known to the particular receiver, then only the receiver can able to demodulate that particular signal. So this is the uh, channel assignment for the uh, CDMA. So here we are using a same time slot, same frequency, but the channels are varied with respect to the codes. So here each independent user acts as independently without having the knowledge about the, all the other users. Okay. In CDMA, you use the power amplitude power uh, of multiple users of a, at the receiver end determines the noise flow after the decorrelation. So if the power of the each user within the cell is not controlled in such a way that then there will be one problem will created. That problem is called as a near power problem. So what is near power problem is that so for example here all the uh, mobile phone for example we have a base station in that base station within that cell we have a two three users you know so here all the users are using a uh, same frequency and all the users are using the same time slots so how we can vary this means if a receiver if a base station transmits information or a receiver transmits info user transmits the information you know the user which are nearer to the base station will all the will transmit in terms of many power or much power the user which are at the larger distance with respect to the base station you know if they transmit the information you know that you can reach the base station with the low power so normally the base station will always look into the user which have a more power it does not consider the user which are at the far away within the cell so this problem is called as a near far problem. The base station will always look onto the uh, device which is nearer to the base station because it transmits with the more power. It cannot be able to monitor devices which are far away from the uh, base station because if, as the distance progresses, you know the power of the signal will get reduced. So because of this, the problem will created. The base station cannot be able to uh, listen to that particular user which are far away from the base station. The problem is called as a near power problem. So to combat the near power near power problem, you know, the power control has to be done with the CDMA. So each time the base station will create an initiation and it transmits the information to the users which are far away from the base station to increase the power level of the signal so that the base station can able to listen to that user which are far away from the base station. So we can able to overcome the near power problem by creating a request to increase the power level of the UV. This initiative, this can be initiated with the help of the base station. So next is we are going to discuss about the features of CDMA. So here the CDMA many uh, using the same same time slot and same carrier frequency. That's the one advantages of CDMA, you know. And uh, CDMA has a soft capacity limit as 
unlike to the uh, TDMA or FDMA. So increase the number of users in a CDMA will rise this the noise floor in a linear manner. Okay. So uh, here there is a no limit, absolute limit of maximum number of users that can be accommodated in a CDMA. We can have a more number of users when compared to the CDMA and the TDMA because that has been restricted with the help of either frequency and time. But here there is no restriction with the number of users which can accommodate in a single cell. And the one more advantage is the multipath fading is subsequently reduced in a CDMA because here the with the help of spreading, you know, we are spreading the information. A narrow band signal is converted into a wide band signal, so the fading is very low as compared to the TDMA and the FDMA. And the channel data rate of CDMA is higher than the uh, FDMA and the TDMA. Okay, and normally a yeah, CDMA requires a rake receiver at the receiving end to in order to improve the signal reception at the receiving end so it requires the rake receiver at the receiving end in order to receive the signal okay. cdma uses a co-channel cells so it can use a macroscopic spatial diversity to provide a soft handoff soft handoff normally carried out by the msc so the cdma will offer to go with the soft handoff so these are the advantages of a CDMA or features of a CDMA. So in a CDMA, we have creating a code, spreading signal. With the help of this code, the signal can be modulated and transmitted. At the receiving end, the receiver which know whichever the interest you know, whichever has to receive, that has to know the code. Only then know the code, you know, that user can be able to demodulate the signal. All the other signals, you know, that can be received by the receiver can be considered as a noise. So it uses a, a same frequency as well as time slot, time slot that is the advantages of a CDMA. Okay. Here the codes are one code, all the codes are orthogonal to one another, so it can avoid the interference with the other. And then CDMA accommodate more number of users as than there is no restriction in the number of users when compared to the TDMA and the FDMA. So the only problem with the CDMA is CDMA has to operate the near far problem. So as I uh, uh, the near problem, problem problem is also overcome by with the help of uh, power control mechanisms okay that can be initiated by the base station so this is all about a cdma technique